Honourable Member for Regina Wascan. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Throughout 2020, Mosaic Stadium in Regina, home of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, sat vacant, empty of the fans and their beloved players during the pandemic. It is my hope that someday, in the not too distant future, Rider Nation will once again gather safely, sit shoulder to, sh shoulder to shoulder, and cheer on the green and white as they pummel the Winnipeg Blue Bombers or any other inferior team. To get to that future moment in the bleachers under a bright blue prairie sky, the teams of the Canadian Football League are going to need sources of revenue, the lack of which led to the cancellation of last year's football season. And that is why I am pleased to speak in favour of Bill C-218, the Safe and Regulated Sports Betting Act. Many of the merits of this bill have already been explained in detail in this House by my friend and colleague, the Honourable Member for Saskatoon Grasswood. One of the most persuasive arguments in favour of Bill C-218 is the good that could be done if the $14 billion in revenue generated every year in Canada by single-game sports betting were redirected from underground or offshore entities to lawful distribution in Canada. Currently, as the member for Saskatoon Grasswood has pointed out, the provincial government of Saskatchewan, as well as other provinces, already takes revenues from lottery ticket programs such as Sport Select and ProLine to help fund amateur sports and other community activities. These gambling services, known as parlay betting, require bettors to place wagers on multiple sporting events. For example, if I want to bet on the Saskatchewan Rough Riders to beat the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, I cannot bet on just that one game. I also have to bet on one or two other games that I may not be interested in watching. And if I don't pick those other games correctly, no payout is made. And I can inform the House from personal experience just how annoying and frustrating that can be. But even with these limitations, parlay betting generates approximately $500 million in revenue in Canada every year. Now, let's consider the $500 million generated annually by parlay betting and then think about the $14 billion generated annually by single game sports betting in Canada. What could be done with that extra $14 billion? One institution that could benefit from this extra revenue is the Canadian Football League and its nine members teams. If it's the CFL that incurs all of the costs of putting on the games that people are going to be betting on, then it seems reasonable that the league and its teams will want to negotiate with their provincial governments some sort of revenue sharing agreement for some of the revenues generated from single game sports betting. The Canadian Football League or its predecessors have been part of Canadian culture for almost as long as Confederation, with the Canadian Rugby Football Union having been founded in 1884. The Grey Cup trophy has been around for over a century, having been donated by Governor General Earl Grey in 1909. Since then, this trophy has been presented every November to the, champ to the winner of the championship Grey Cup game. The only interruptions being for World War I, the Spanish flu pandemic, and the current camp pandemic, which cancelled last year's football season. On a personal note, I can honestly say that one of my fondest childhood memories is watching the 1989 Grey Cup game on TV in my parents' basement with my older brother and the neighbour kids as the Saskatchewan Rough Riders beat the Hamilton Tiger Cats in the newly opened Toronto Skydome. I apologize to any members from Hamilton if that brought back some bad memories. As we come out of the pandemic, many Canadians, including myself, would like to see life get back to normal. That includes seeing the Canadian Football League play the 2021 season. I would like to remind the House that another option to enable the CFL to play this season is to simply provide them with a massive taxpayer subsidy. In fact, this is exactly what the League was asking for last spring, anywhere from $30 million to $150 million. Madam Speaker, I can't help but think 
that it would be nice if we could have our cake and eat it too. It would be nice if we could save this great Canadian institution without being a burden to taxpayers. I believe that decriminalizing single game sports betting will allow the Canadian Football League the opportunity to do exactly this. I would like to discuss now how Bill C-218, once passed into law, can create a voluntary source of revenue to help the Canadian Football League, its member teams, and other organizations recover from the major, major economic disruption of the pandemic. Quite simply, many organizations, including some professional sports teams, had already negotiated revenue sharing agreements in the past with their provincial governments for parlay betting such as ProLine and Sports Select. If single game sports betting were to be decriminalized and regulated by provincial governments, then this presents a real opportunity for the Canadian Football League and its member teams to negotiate future revenue sharing agreements for the revenues generated from single game sports betting. If such a framework had, in, had been in place prior to the pandemic, then perhaps last year's CFL season could have been saved. The problem faced last year by the Canadian Football League is that their business model depends on gate-driven revenues, such as ticket sales, concessions, and parking. Other sources of revenue, such as TV contracts and merchandise, just aren't enough to make the league economically viable. This is why the 2020 season was cancelled, and this is why the 2021 season is in jeopardy. But if single-game sports betting were legal in this country, and if the CFL had revenue sharing agreements in place with their provincial governments, then this long-standing Canadian institution would be on stronger financial footing to come out of the pandemic and once again be economically viable. Madam Speaker, the Canadian Football League is a benefit to many Canadians over and above the players and fans. Every team at every stadium needs hundreds of workers to bring each game to life. Think of them all, food and beverage vendors, security guards, tour bus and motor coach operators, even sports broadcasters and camera operators, all have a role to play in creating the contest on the field and on the TVs and tablets of fans all across the country. Madam Speaker, I sincerely hope that we will get out of this current pandemic as soon as possible without a third or fourth wave. I would also like for there to be no more pandemics in the future. We can all get on with our lives and there will be no need for the CFL to ask the federal government for a taxpayer-funded bailout to save the season or the league. If parliamentarians agree to pass Bill C-218 into law, then provincial legitimization of that $14 billion in annual gaming revenues can help improve the lives, not just of the players and fans of the Canadian Football League, but also of people involved in other sports, cultural and community organizations across the country as these revenues are distributed legally under various provincially regulated frameworks. In conclusion, I would like to thank my friend and colleague, the Honourable Member for Saskatoon Grasswood, for sponsoring this bill. And finally, Madam Speaker, if Bill C-218 is passed into law, I'll bet you $50 the Saskatchewan Rough Riders win the Grey Cup this year. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of National Defence.